a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been scattered by the persecution that arose because of Stephen went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but Jews. There were some Cypriots and Cyrenians among them, however, who came to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks as well, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart. For he was a good man filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All you nations, praise the Lord. All you nations, praise the Lord. His foundation upon the holy mountains the Lord loves. The gates of Zion more than any dwelling of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. All you nations, nations, praise praise the the Lord. Lord. I tell of Egypt and Babylon among those who know the Lord. Of Philistia, Tyre, Ethiopia, this man was born there. And of Zion they shall say, one and all were born in her. And he who has established her is the Most High Lord. All you nations, praise the Lord. They shall note when the peoples are enrolled, this man was born there. And all shall sing in their festive dance, my home is within you. All you nations, praise the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. The feast of the dedication was taking place in Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus walked about in the temple area on the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you did not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. When we come next month to the culmination of the Easter season, and we have just about a whole month still to rejoice with these Alleluia's and the resurrection theme, we will celebrate the Feast of Pentecost because the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is the fruit of the resurrection. Right the week after that, The church looks back at everything we have just celebrated. The incarnation at Christmas, the Son being obedient to the Father and offering Himself to the Father in the crucifixion, the resurrection and the ascension of the Son back to the Father, and then the Father and the Son ascending from heaven the Holy Spirit. The church looks back on all this and says, 
Well, what we have learned is that God is one in three persons. The Father who sends the Son, the Son who goes back to the Father, the Father and the Son who send the Holy Spirit. In other words, having celebrated the historical realities of all these events of salvation history, the church then reflects on who God is. And we celebrate, therefore, the Sunday after Pentecost, the Tr Trinity Sunday, the Sunday when we reflect on that aspect of our faith, that God is one in three persons. That aspect is brought powerfully home to us today in this gospel. The Father and I are one. Jesus was not ambiguous about who he was. And that's why people who say, well, I don't believe in Jesus the way Christians do, you know, that he's God and everything like that. I think he's a great religious leader. Or he's a great man. Well, no, you can't say he's a great man if, in fact, he claimed to be God but wasn't. Either he was exactly what he claimed to be or, well, he wasn't a great, great man or a great religious leader. Great religious leaders are honest truthful, have integrity, do not claim more about themselves than they deserve in right, in right to claim. No, he was who he claimed to be. The Father and I are one. Now, what is this oneness? It's a oneness of nature. We say it in the creed that he is God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Consubstantial, meaning the substance, the, the stuff, if you will, of who the Father is, is also who the Son is. Consubstantial. They have the same substance, the same being. It's the same God. Same divinity. Same mind and will. Same power. The same eternity. You know, we think, when we think in our human experience of the words father and son, obviously a father exists before his son. He's older than his son. This is not so when the words are used of God. Father and son, and it's hard for our mind to, to, to see this. Father and son are co-eternal. They, they, the son existed for as long as the father existed. From all eternity. So, but this relationship between the Father and the Son, Jesus talks about here and in other places. He says, the Father has given me my sheep. Notice what, how he said this? He said, I give my sheep eternal life. No one can take them out of my hand. But then he says, why are they in my hand? How are they in my hand? How are we in Jesus, because all of us are living in Jesus every day. We are branches on the vine. We are living stones in the temple. We are members of his body. We are in Jesus. Jesus is in, uh, in us. He has us in his hands. How did that happen? Jesus says, the Father put them in my hands. In fact, they are also in the Father's hands. And that's what led him then to say, the Father and I are one. It's not two sets of hands. We are in the hands of the one God. But at the same time, to say it's the same God, the same substance, the same mind and will and power and divinity, they're not the same persons. The Father and the Son, it's not just two different names or two different roles for the same person. It's two different persons. There's a true distinction in the relationship. And Jesus is talking here about the relationship. He says, the Father has given them to me. And then he says he is greater than all. Well, he's equal to the Son and to the Spirit, but he's the origin in the relationships. It's the Father giving the Son, his sheep. And this reminds us, doesn't it, of what Jesus said in John 6 when he said, no one can come to me, to the Son, to Jesus. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. So we think in Christian prayer and worship, and rightly so, of Jesus leading us back to the Father. Every prayer we say to the Father, we say through Christ our Lord. Because He is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way back to the Father. It's also true to say that we came to the Son because of the Father. The Father who sent me draws Him. 
Jesus also said, No one knows the Father but the Son, and no one knows the Son but the Father, and anyone to whom the Father wishes to reveal Him. So the Son, yes, leads us to the Father. But it's also true to say the Father leads us to the Son. The Father has revealed Himself in and through Jesus Christ. His letter to the Hebrews, in the first chapter, the Father finds that the fullness of His being expressed now in the Son. In fragmentary and varied ways, God spoke to us in the past through the prophets, but now He speaks to us through His Son. And no one can take them out of my hand. Isn't that a beautiful reflection for our prayer today? No one, Jesus says, can take my sheep out of my hand. No one can take them out of the Father's hand. So don't worry about the confusion and the division. About the corruption and the decay in our culture and even in the church about those who lead others astray. This is not going to take you out of Jesus' hand. The, 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 the attacks on freedom and on faith and on family, this is not going to take you out of Jesus' hand. Very often, we're worried more about what other people are doing than about what we're doing to ourselves. We're worried about more about the external forces coming upon us than our own capacity for infidelity and sin. What we need to be most concerned about is jumping out of His hand ourselves by our own sinful choices. That should have us more worried, my friends. But if you're resolving today with all the fervor of your heart to stay in the hands of Jesus, if you are renewing your commitment to keep His commands, If you are deepening your faith and saying yes, yes, yes to the truths He has revealed and you're thirsting more and more for Him, no one can take you out of His hand. Let that be our inspiration and confidence today as we continue to walk on the way of salvation. He's not saying salvation is automatic and He's not saying we can't lose it. Because we can decide to be unfaithful. But if we're renewing our fidelity again today, but then, brothers and sisters, we are secure. Even if the whole rest of the world is going crazy. Lord Jesus, keep us in your hand. Keep us in the Father's hand. May we rejoice in the power of your resurrection and the life that it has given to us. Amen.